Welcome to part 2 of the presentation on swaps. In part 1, we talked about plain vanilla interest rate swaps. We talked about the general characteristics of swaps. We also showed that a swap can be thought of as a series of forward rate agreements. Now in part 2, we'll talk about currency swaps, equity swaps, and we'll also talk about how a swap agreement can be terminated. Again, recall the common theme is that a swap is an agreement between two parties to exchange a series of cash flows. When we talk about currency swaps, now the cash flows are being exchanged in different currencies. So let's look at a very simple currency swap where we have two parties. Party A pays Party B $1 million as a three-year loan and Party A I'm, I'm sorry, party B pays party A rupees 90 million as a three year loan. So now when we talk about currency swaps, the actual money is exchanged at initiation. So let's see what's happening here. So this is party A and this is party B. So at time zero, when the swap is initiated, what is happening party a pays b 1 million so this is our initial so dollars 1 million goes from a to b and party b pays a 90 million so this is the initial principal amount that is flowing between the two parties so this is 90 million going from party b to party a then assuming this is a three-year annual pay loan then what's going to happen at the end of every year? So at the end of year one, as well as the end of year two and end of year three, interest payments will be exchanged. So this middle box represents interest payments. Now, since party B has borrowed dollars, party B is going to make interest payments in dollars. So party B on an annual basis will pay make interest payments based on the agreed upon amount so if party b agreed to pay at a five percent rate then five percent of one million dollars so this is how many dollars party b will make to this is the payment interest payment from b to a at the end of every year a however had borrowed rupees so a will make interest payments in rupees so that payment given that the rupees have been borrowed at 12 percent the rupee payment will be equal to 12 percent of 90 million rupees so this is the payment that is made by a at the end of every year and again i want to emphasize that here netting does not typically take place here the actual payments are being made and then after three years once this currency swap is over then we swap back the notional principal so initially a had lent 1 million to b so b now returns the 1 million dollars and and the and party a returns the 90 million so this was a million so re returns the 90 million rupees so that is our that's a very simplistic currency swap in this swap we assumed a fixed rate for both currencies now before i talk about the other types of currency swaps let me very briefly discuss the motivation for a swap now let's look at a very simple case let's say that we are that you know party a and party b are two companies so let's for simplicity say that we have one company that's called Park Co, which is a Pakistani company, and we have a US company called US Co. And it turns out that the Pakistani company is well known in Pakistan, and therefore it can its its cost of borrowing in rupees, so the rupee cost is low, but the Pakistani company wants to expand in the US, so it needs dollars. Similarly, we have a US company that wants to invest in Pakistan. So for the US company, however, the dollar cost, so the cost of borrowing dollars for the US company is low, but what they need is, is rupees. Now, 
both of these entities can contact a swap facilitator who can who can bring these two entities together and what can happen is since the pakistani company can borrow the 90 million rupees at a low cost pakistani company can borrow 90 million rupees at a relatively low interest cost and lend the 90 million to the u.s company and then the u.s company which is doing its operation in pakistan can then make interest payments based on rupees for the u.s company since it can borrow dollars at a low cost so the u.s company gets its dollars at a relatively low cost lends the dollars to the pakistani company and then the pakistani company makes uh, makes interest payments against the dollar so by getting into the swap contract both the pakistani company and the u.s company have managed to reduce their cost of borrowing so that is a simplistic example at level one that's all you need to really understand in terms of the major motivation for a currency swap in the context of currency swaps you need to understand that we can have four possible types of currency swaps the type that we just saw is the simplest type where party a pays a fixed rate on the pkr received whereas party b pays a fixed rate on the dollars received okay i apologize for this typo now type two is where uh, a pays a floating rate on pkr received so for example party a might based on might pay based on the karachi interbank offer rate whereas party b pays a fixed rate so that fixed rate might for example be five percent the third scenario is a pays a fixed rate on the pkr received so a might pay a fixed rate of 13 percent and b pays a floating rate based on say libor and finally we can have a situation where both parties pay a floating rate so a can pay a floating rate based on kybor and b can pay a floating rate based on libor the third and final kind of swap we'll talk about is a equity swap and within equity swap we can have three sub categories one kind of an equity swap is where party a pays a return on an index and party b pays a fixed rate and how does this work let's say that our index is the s p 500 and let's say that we have a three-year annual pay swap zero one two three the way this equity swap will work is for every year we figure out how much the equity index changed by so if in this case we are saying a pays based on the return of s p 500 b pays a fixed rate let's say that fixed rate is five percent so if b is paying a fixed rate of five percent then for period one we know that the that b is going to pay five percent and let's say that over this period one the index went up by ten percent so this means that the equity index pair is going to pay 10 percent the net effect is that the equity index pair is going to pay five percent then in the next year let's say that the index went up by 15 percent so if the index went up by 15 percent again party b the fixed rare is pair is responsible for paying five percent the equity index pair is responsible for paying 15 percent so overall the equity index pair pays 15 percent now in the third year let's say that the index goes down by 20 percent now party b who's the fixed rate pair pays five percent and the index pair actually pays minus 20 percent what this minus 20 percent means is that the index pair is not going to pay 20 percent he will receive 20 percent so effectively what happens is party b which is the fixed rate pair doesn't pay five percent he actually has to pay 25 percent so notice that notice two things over here that we figure out who pays whom how much at the end of every period unlike plain interest rate swaps where we knew the payment on settlement date right when the period began 
here we figure out who pays whom how much based on how the index did over the year so the payment which is 5% of the notional principal can only be calculated at the end of period 1 and secondly the payment even of the fixed rate payer can be variable notice that the payment over here when the index went down the payment for the fixed rate payer which is b is actually 25% so when the index goes down the fixed rate payer has to make a extra payment so we say that in an equity contract the fixed rate payer might also have to make a variable payment now what are the two other types of equity swaps uh, we can have party A pays a return on the index that again can be say S&P 500 and party B pays a floating rate so rather than paying this 5% let's say party B pays LIBOR plus 2% so that's another example now here again LIBOR will be determined at the beginning of every period but the return on the S&P 500 will be based on the return for the overall period so here again we will not know what the payment is until the end of the period and finally we can have a setup where A pays based on one index say the S&P 500 and you can have B which pays uh, based on uh, another index so you might have party B which is paying based on the Dow Jones industrial uh, average or Dow Jones index so two separate indices party A pays, pays based on the return on this index party B pays based on the return on uh, another index just to highlight two points because these can easily show up on your exam I've already talked about this but payments on both sides can be floating and I showed this in in my example earlier where the equity index actually went down so clearly the the, the, the entity called the fixed rate pair still has a floating rate payment secondly the payment is not known till the end of the settlement period I think I've mentioned that enough times finally how do we terminate a swap so one way of terminating a swap is through where both let's say party A and party B are in this swap and they both agree before the completion of the swap tenor that uh, that one party pays a certain amount of cash to the other party if both parties agree they can cancel or terminate the swap before the formal termination date another is that a party gets into a offsetting contract so if a party has a pay fixed position they can take a opposite position by getting into a pay floating so there might be a certain cost involved there but by getting into an offsetting contract we can also terminate a swap contract number three they can be a resale but this is very unusual because we don't really have a secondary market for swaps as discussed earlier these are not traded on an exchange so it might be very hard to find a third party that is willing to buy the particular swap contract that you have negotiated earlier so this is extremely infrequent and finally you could use a swap -tion. now this is fun to say but I don't think we need to get into too much detail on this in level 1 all you need to know is what is mentioned on these two lines a swaption is a option to enter into a swap and what you might do when you've entered into a swap is also purchase a swaption for an offsetting swap so if it turns out that you want to get out of your swap then you can exercise the swaption if you didn't quite get that don't worry about it we will see this in detail in level 2 right now just memorize these two statements I'd say that as long as you just know that one way of getting out of a swap is to is to use a swaption that is good enough for now so that is it as always practice very hard there are about 12 questions in the curriculum try to go through all of those 12 questions they are excellent practice and if you have any comments please post them on YouTube if you like this video then please click on the like button